Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So we got another victim today who's very brave to make one of these videos, the what I spend in a week videos. So they, they know I see him. You know, I go through the, uh, the search bar and I type in what I spend in a week and I sort by newest and I go and take a look at him. And if something stands out, I'm going to watch it and comment on it. But this one in particular is something special because it's from none other than Monica Church. That last name might sound kind of familiar because she is Shelby Church's twin sister. And today, she's living on $500,000 a year in Seattle, Washington. Wait for it, millennial money. These are my comments and this is everything that she's doing right and wrong. As soon as you subscribe, by the way, helps out the channel a lot. Uh, give it a little poke for the like button, that helps out too. Comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, that helps out as well. All of that is, fa oh, and then you also have to watch the video all the way to the end. So there you go. Thank you so much, and now let's begin. I'm a little bit embarrassed by my finances sometimes. I feel like I don't have it all under control. This will be my fourth year of averaging $500,000 a year. You know what's so sad though? You know, this like 95% of people watching this video don't make anywhere close to $500,000 a year at age 28. Oh, don't text me, no, Just stop it. Anyway, my point being, if, if she doesn't feel like she's got her finances under control, man, what does that say for everybody else? Every time I log into my bank account, I feel anxious. I know that's something I need to do a little bit better of a job at. I'm Monica Church, and you're watching Millennial Money. Oh, she said it. She said it. She said Millennial Money. It's my favorite. You're supposed to go, wait for it, Millennial Money. Those were back in the old days. I always used to say, wait for it, millennial money. Uh, man, those are the days four years ago, before the pandemic, when finance was just smooth sailing. I have three streams of income. My YouTube channel, my real estate agent business, and a new endeavor for me is coaching. I average about $250,000 a year on YouTube now, and about $250,000 as a real estate agent. That's interesting. She's got a 50-50. I was 50-50 between real estate, basically doing exactly what she's doing, between working as a real estate agent and YouTube. It took me like three years to be almost 50-50 between the two, and then YouTube just skyrocketed on year like three, I believe it was. But it's challenging to manage the two because it's like the thing with real estate, you're working around someone else's schedule. It is not on your time. If someone calls you at 7 p.m. and they say, hey, I wanna go see this house right now, what are you going to do? It's like you're running a customer service based business. You got to go and do it unless you have somebody else who could do it for you. But point being, it's very challenging to do it. I'm curious if she were to pursue YouTube full time again, if she'd be making way more than that. I don't know. Sounds like she has a pretty good balance between the two and it's smart. You never want to put all of your eggs in one basket. I just started coaching and my first month I made $10,000. My time probably would be better spent just focusing in on one career, but I am passionate about many things and I really like having the multiple streams of income. Yeah, I bet she'd do pretty well with coaching and I bet she's getting a decent amount of clients from the YouTube channel. Comment, let me know if I'm wrong. But uh, I could see it. You know, I had this difficulty when I was uh, working as a real estate agent. People would always comment, leave the worst comments. Like, Ooh, you're just trying to pitch your business as a real estate agent. I'm like, I I've not done a single deal from YouTube. Even to this day, I've not done a single deal in real estate that has come from YouTube. I got one listing. That's it, one listing. And uh, that was a good listing. It was five and a half million bucks. Did not sell. But I got, I, got, I got a listing. My expenses are at least around $8,000 a month. My biggest expense is my mortgage. My mortgage is $3,800 a month, but I've never actually paid that full $3,800. Yeah, her expenses really aren't terrible. Housing is fantastic. For the amount of money she's making, housing gets a thumbs up from me. Airbnb, what is that? $500 a month, so she's gotta be traveling, spending that, okay. Food is $1,100 a month. I'll tell you, as a real estate agent, you're taking your clients out. Uh, a lot of times between showings, it's like, hey, you wanna grab lunch, you always gotta treat them, uh, or, or go and get them a coffee or something like that. You're always doing something between showings, so that's probably in some of that. Transportation, $809. It's that Porsche that she's driving. She's driving a Porsche, but then again, so right off for the real estate agent business, you need a nicer car. If you're showing your own nice places, you need a nice car. So, pet, $200 a month, okay, personal care, fine. Wine, what the hell is that? $400 a month on wine? What? Wine. 
I, I should be like, wine! Get it? Wine is she spending that much money on wine? That's a, I'd say, cut that out. Why? Why do that? $400 a month. Just go to Bevmo and get the, get the $2, two buck chucks. I don't know. It, it, listen, I guess if you like wines, $400 a month on alcohol seems a lot to me. Travel is $1,200 a month. So again, she's probably traveling a lot. So between that and the Airbnb, all right. When I first moved in, I actually had roommates in two bedrooms. So one paid $1,150 a month and one paid $1,000 a month. And I paid the difference. Now I live here with my boyfriend. He pays me $1,500 in rent and I pay the $2,300 indifference. Ooh, she, imagine that. Getting getting a boyfriend and all of a sudden charge rent. I mean, listen, it makes sense, right? Because if he's not living there, he's got to live somewhere. So it's like, why should that, it shouldn't be on your dime, but I'm just saying, it, it, it's, a good, it's a good deal, okay? He's got a good place to live. She's got income coming in from that. Maybe it's a bit of a weird dynamic, because she, uh, but then again, it's like, you know what? It, it's fair, because he's, he's got to spend rent somewhere. So you may as well do it and, and she'd be the beneficiary of that. Everyone wins. The average rule for how much you should spend on rent or a mortgage is 30% of your income. I don't spend anywhere near that. That is changing though, because I am in contract on a house with my boyfriend in Palm Springs, California. Oh, you know what they say about you shouldn't buy something unless you're married. You know, it's it just... It, <sighs> There's more in place, okay? There's more protections if something were to happen. I know nothing about your relationship. I'm making a lot of assumptions here. It's just generally, you don't want to start getting in, mixing up properties, boyfriend, you know. You just have to have such an ironclad contract in place outside of just like who's on title, who's doing this, who's that. It just gets messy, you know? But uh, I guess things get messy too after, uh, you know, if you go through a divorce. So either way, it's, it's gonna be messy regardless. You're gonna break a few eggs to maybe make an omelet, okay? But uh, I just, just seems like a bad idea to me. Then again, I mean, Monica knows real estate, okay? She, she, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir. I'm sure there's something different that I'm not getting, but generally, would never recommend buying with a boyfriend, girlfriend, only, uh, a spouse, legally on paper. It's probably for the best. In total, I'm going to have close to $10,000 in mortgages. It will be split with one other person, so I will be accounting for $5,000 a month in mortgages. Again, it's just a big commitment to make. A mortgage, like, you know, not a marriage is a big commitment too, but a mortgage, 30 years, you're, you're on the hook for that. The bank is knocking on your door every single month for that payment. I'm just saying, there's just a lot that could go wrong there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shut up about it now, but I'm just, just saying, okay? Just saying. I'm going to live in Seattle for six months of the year and California for six months of the year. No, it's not six months of the year. No, no, you're, you're in Seattle six months and one day, and then in uh, California, five months and 29 days. You never wanna do a 50-50, because in California is gonna come, they, hey, we want our income from you. They want half of it. So I would say always you, you gotta be below that threshold. Make it very clear you don't live in California. You go and vacation there every now and then. You go and enjoy its beauty for less than six months of the year so they don't say that you live there full time. I do also own a home in Palm Springs with my sister Shelby. It's an Airbnb and we use it as an investment property. It doesn't quite break even and on average I pay $500 a month for it. Yeah, but you know what? You get to enjoy it too and the values have gone up a ton lately. So that's gonna insulate you in case anything were to happen with that Airbnb and it just doesn't get rented. You've made so much inequity on that that you're gonna be fine. You got so much padding there. But going between California and Seattle might be more difficult as a real estate agent though. Cause I, I know for me, I got so stressed. Anytime I would leave town, even for like five days, as soon as I leave, clients are calling me up. Hey, we wanna see this house, we wanna do this, we want, and I'm not there. So it's just, it, it's difficult. Even if you got a good team in place, people want you. They want your expertise. It's hard to instill that in a colleague. I'll spend on average $1,500 on this shopping trip. This is pretty much all I wear, is a mix of this pant with this style of shirt. $500 a month, again, it seems like a lot. Decent amount. Uh, but, then, but then again, okay, I will say a lot of these are probably because she's a real estate agent. Where I now keep saying a real estate agent thing. They spend money like, like, like opening up a faucet and money just flows out. That's basically what it's like. Because again, 
You're taking out clients all the time. It's a lot of networking. It's very much a people business. You, you got to look the part. You can't show up to an open house and just and look like you know you're unsheltered. You, you, you got to have a, a nice outfit, nice car, maybe maybe a nice watch on. It just it helps with the image. It, as superficial as it is to say, there is a lot of truth to it. I like to think I'm pretty low maintenance with self care. This accounts for makeup, hair styling products, getting my hair done, which I do about twice a year. 475. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've uh, I thought about it. I, I don't like the wrinkles on my forehead. And uh, it's getting to the point now where I'm worried it's like I, I keep moving the forehead and the wrinkles are going to start to like really appear there even when I'm not doing this. I don't know. Maybe uh, well, I, I, I'm just scared. Like I, I worry once you go down that route, do you stop? Is it something like you get a little bit and then you go overboard and all of a sudden my, my lips look all like this and my face is all like back like that? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. So it's like <laughs> I, I'm a little scared. You know. My health insurance is $13 a month. It is a catastrophic plan. So if something horrible happened to me, I would have to pay $16,000 out of pocket and then the rest would be covered. $13, how? How is that possible? I'm paying $300 a month also for a catastrophic plan, also for something that I have to pay like $8,000 out of pocket is my deductible. But um, I don't know, how is she getting it for 13? It, that seems wrong to me. It should be like 300. People are so quick to get a pet, but not really think about how much that's gonna cost them. My dogs cost me on average probably about 150 to $200 a month. The biggest expense is their grooming. This costs on average $125. Oh, it's a floof. They got so many floofs. They're just so cute. I like when they when they do this and they look up at you like that. It's just it's it's cute. It warms your heart. I was paying five thousand dollars a year in subscriptions, and a lot of them were things that I didn't know about and forgot about. It's so hard to track these all down that what I did was I actually called and I reported my credit card as lost, so that all of the subscriptions would cancel and I would have a clean slate. This needs to be a, a advertisement for Rocket Money. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. Okay. I really, really, really like Rocket Money. They have this service that uh, basically goes and categorizes every recurring expense, and then you could cancel it through them, and they make it really easy to do. I like them so much, I, I did a, a sponsorship with them, and the sponsorship converted so poorly that they didn't want to sponsor anymore. They just said that so few people signed up, which sucks because it's like I really enjoy the service, they're a fantastic product. Sometimes I feel like uh, when they give you talking points, it sounds too like pitchy. I, I don't like that. So this is me just talking about them as just like a user. And I will put the old link in the description that I used that they said didn't convert well. If you want to try it, they're not paying me to say this at all. They, they canceled that sponsorship a while ago because, again, they said no one signed up. Like it wasn't worth it for them. So if you guys want to, the link is in the description. Again, they were previously a sponsor, no longer a sponsor, but I really, really, really like them. So if you want to try them out, uh, it would solve her subscription problem. I, I've even found subscriptions through them that I had no idea that I did. Just like random YouTube memberships and like just stupid stuff. But I found it through them and they're free. So the link is down below. Not sponsored, but they did sponsor me in the past. So there you go. It's confusing. I think me and my boyfriend go out once a week for a nice meal. We'll split a bottle of wine. We'll get appetizers. You know, we'll do the whole thing. And the bill comes out to be like $200 every time. What? How? 200 bucks. You got to find cheaper spots. You know what I have a feeling it is? the alcohol. If she's spending $400 a month on wine, guarantee that one time she's going out, she's getting a nice glass of wine. It's 22 bucks. You know, they both do that. That's 50 bucks between them. So I guarantee they could save a ton of money just by uh, maybe bring your own wine or bring a flask. Go on Amazon, get like a little flask, pour the wine in there, and then just ask for an empty cup and pour it in the cup and there you go, save money. My guilty pleasure spending habit is on my small collection of wine. I have wine subscriptions to some wineries where the bottles cost on average $50. Yes, I can absolutely taste the difference between a good bottle and a bad bottle. Oh yeah, see, I can't. They all taste the same, all alcohol. From the most expensive to least expensive to wine tip, just tastes the same to me. It's nasty. Uh, there's really, really nothing that I like. Just would enjoy drinking besides coffee. 
Bailey's. Bailey's is the only alcohol that I that I could actually like drink and be like, oh, this tastes pretty good. Not that I would go out of my way to drink it, but just saying, I can't taste the difference. Two years ago, I bought my dream car. It is a Porsche Macan GTS. I've loved having that car, but I'm actually going to sell it soon because I have an Airstream trailer and I need to buy something that can pull it. Oh yeah, see, she's gotta get a truck. Just get a good old like Ford, that F-150, something like that. In 2020, I bought a vintage Airstream trailer that me and my dad started renovating. I'm now having it professionally renovated in Texas. The renovation's gonna cost about $110,000, of which I've paid in $75,000. Oh uh, man, what? there's gotta be a cheaper option. It seems more like a hobby to me. If you're interested in doing that, just go and buy one that's done. Find someone who's just like, they gotta sell it. The economy hit them hard, they, they had this Airstream, they just want to get out of it. That, that's what you want. You want a good deal like that, and then you could go and rent it. And you don't have to rent it 150 times to break even. That's a lot. One expensive thing that I did buy recently that was completely worth it was my first class flight from Atlanta to Cape Town. That was $6,000 and it was so well worth it. Wow, you know what's crazy is I booked a trip to Croatia. It's hard for me to say that, Croatia. I booked the trip and um, yeah, first class was $6,000, I think per way. Yeah, it was like $6,000 one way. It was like crazy expensive. Like I couldn't justify it or it's like $1,500. So I, I picked the $1,500 one. So I'm gonna be in one seat for like, for like 12 hours. It's gonna suck, but uh, I can't. I I couldn't do it, I couldn't justify it. A lot of people know I have a twin sister, Shelby, that makes YouTube videos, and you might have seen, she last year made double what I made. A question that I get asked a lot is, am I jealous of her? Sure, I was a bit jealous for a little while, but honestly, I have everything in life that I could possibly want. It's kind of hard to be jealous when I am so fortunate myself. Yeah, you know what, she's got a good mentality about it. I would say, listen, $500,000 a year, 20, years old as long as you don't blow it you know as long as you don't waste on crap you're fine uh, you know all she needs to do is keep her spending the exact same even as it is right now to save the difference don't buy airstream don't don't do all that just get good diversified long-term investments that you could you know let grow on their own uh, that's it overall i thought great video let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section make sure to subscribe and how about this? As a thank you for watching to the end of the video, you could get a free stock worth all the way up to $1,000 with our sponsor, public.com, down below in the description with the code GRAM when you make a deposit. Enjoy. Thank you so much, and until next time.